Already know how to make a fidget spinner? Or even a Lego fidget spinner? Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. And instead of making a fidget spinner, we're going to go ahead and make a fidget spinner app. That's right, today you're going to learn how to make a fidget spinner app for Android. Pretty cool, hey? So, let's do this. Okay, so if you've uh, not seen App Inventor before, uh, it's a great little tool to make Android apps. The apps aren't super professional, but it gives you some idea and can convert your ideas into applications for Android. I'll put the link to the App Inventor start page in the description. And from here, we just click on Create App. So you'll need a Google account, and then you'll get to log in. So we'll just go ahead and start this new project. Uh, we'll just call it, uh, let's do this spinner. Okay. And now we have our first project. Okay, so this is the default screen. I'm not gonna go into all the details of App Inventor 2. It's definitely worth uh, checking it out and uh, have a look at tutorials online. But today we're just gonna go ahead and do this uh, fidget spinner app. So let's get started. So the first screen you'll see is just the screen that you have on the app. So we wanna add a couple of little placements in here. So we'll just go down to the layout and we'll add a horizontal arrangement another horizontal arrangement, and a third one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get the base screen set up first. So we'll just set up the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment to the center. And we have no background image. I'm just gonna change the color to orange, just so we've got a little bit of contrast. And everything else should be okay as is. So we're not going ahead and making anything fantastic. Let's just change this title, which appears at the top of the screen. Okay, so now let's add some features to the screen. So we've just set out effectively a table. Now we wanna add some actual components. So we're making the user interface at the moment. And as you saw on the app, we actually need a label. So let's put the label in there. And we also need a slider to make some adjustments to the position. So we'll just pop that in here. Okay, so those two appear there. Now, for this horizontal arrangement, we'll also make sure that it's set to center. And we also wanna make sure that the height is only a certain height. So let's just make it 10%. If you do percentage when you're, doing, when you're building apps, uh, it'll fit the screen of the actual user. So some screens are small and some are large. So let's go that whole way. And we'll also do fill parent, which just fills it all the way across the screen. So that's the first one. Now the text for the label, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll click on label and we'll go to text for label and it's just gonna be called speed. So this will just be the speed of the fidget spinner. And you'll see how that's all put together a little bit later. I'll just change the font to something a little bit bigger and we'll see if we can make it bold. So that's pretty much it for the slider. We'll just check in here, see if we actually have to make any changes. And what we're gonna do in here is just gonna make the width a little bit smaller. So it's not a huge slider. And so it's just in there. And the maximum value we're gonna make is 10. So this is just gonna be a multiplier. So just go ahead and copy this for now. Uh, you'll see how it all comes together later. And the thumb position is the initial position of the slider. So we'll just make that in the middle somewhere. So make that five. And we're gonna just change the color here because speed is go for green. And we'll change the other color in a second. So that's the first one done. Let's go over to horizontal arrangement number two and we'll add some details in here. So again, it's gonna be the center and the height again will just be 10 percent and we'll do fill parent as well so that's just going to go across the screen okay so we also want to add some features in here too so we want to add a label and we're also going to add another slider okay so and again click on the text for label and we'll go down here and we'll just change that to friction so the friction is the speed 
at which the fidget spinner slows. And make that bold as well. So it's coming along now. We'll add the slider here. And the slider here, the maximum value will be actually 1. And we'll just make a minimum value of 0.1. And again, you'll see how that works. We'll start at a position of 0.5. And the automatic width, we want to change that to, again, make it 30%. So they're about the same size. Okay, so you can see how these, this is coming together now. The other thing we want to do is add the fidget spinner icon, obviously. So we'll go ahead and go to the drawing and animation section. And here we want to add a canvas. So we'll just put that into there. And now we'll just go and make those changes to the canvas. So the canvas will just be fill parent for the height and fill parent for the width. For the actual horizontal arrangement, we're going to make that just 70%. So we use the, made the others 10%. So we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of squeeze room in there. And the width again, we just want to make full across the screen. So we'll go back to the canvas now, double check those settings. Uh, pretty much just change the fill parent for the height and width. And that should be about it. So the other thing we need to do now is add our fidget spinner. Now a canvas is just a playing area. The image sprite will be actually the placeholder for the spinner. So we just drag that onto the canvas. And now we can make some changes here. So I'm going to upload the fidget spinner file and I will share a link to that file in the description. It's one I've modified and I've tried to keep it to the center. It's a square, but uh, it looks a bit offset, but it's just because it's the way that the fidget spinner has been drawn. I uh, wanted to make sure it was pretty much in the center. So again, use that file if you want to. So we're clicking on the in image sprite one, click over to picture and we'll select the blue fidget.png file. So that's a transparent image. You'll be able to see that if we actually just move that over here. Uh, it's actually quite large at the moment. So let's go ahead and maybe change some of those settings. We're just gonna to go to fill parent for that. And on the width, we'll also do fill parent as well. So that should just make it a little bit smaller, hopefully, or maybe not. Okay, so we'll resize that as we go. Okay, so that's pretty much the front screen setup. Uh, there's not much more we need to do here. So let's go across to the building blocks and put in some code and logic for the fidget spinner. So click on blocks. Okay, so again, if you haven't uh, learned about the App Inventor 2, there's lots of different uh, tutorials that you can go through. So we're just gonna go through the basic setup for this fidget spinner. So we're gonna add a procedure to start with. And we're going to call this the load procedure. So load spinner. Okay, so when you want to initialize an app, you always want to just set the settings first, just to make sure that whenever it gets turned on, it's always going to get the correct settings. So right now we're going to go down to the fidget spinner. Okay, we might actually go back to the uh, image sprite screen. And we might just change the name here, just so we know which one it is. Okay, so we're just going to rename that and we'll call it uh, Fidget Spinner. Okay, so at least we can see that in the blocks now. That will make a little bit more sense. Go over to Fidget Spinner. We're going to set the Fidget Spinner to rotate. Uh, we'll just drag that into here. Let's just go back and check to make sure we actually turn that off. Okay, so it's already set to rotate, so we'll turn that off and we're gonna manually set that ourselves. So we want some logic around that and uh, where we wanna set that to true. Next, we're gonna set up the fidget spinner width. So we we'll click on fidget spinner. And we pop that in there. Now we want the width to be a little bit less than the actual canvas size. So we don't want it to be going over the edge. So let's just do a little mathematical equation for that. We'll just do a multiplier and we need to grab the canvas width. So we click on canvas, canvas width, and we drop that in there and we multiply that out by a number so we need a maths number, let's grab that one, 
and we'll just make it uh, 75%, so 0.75. Okay, so now we want to set the height. And as the fidget spinner image is a square, we're just going to set the fidget spinner height to be the same size as the width. So we've already predetermined what that's going to be. So let's just grab the width variable and pop that in there. Okay, so that's the basic settings for the fidget spinner. Now we need to position this onto the screen. Okay, so we go into fidget spinner and we're going to grab a move to. So we're going to set it to the X and Y coordinates that we want to. So in this case, again, we're going to use another maths equation. Uh, we'll start with a multiplier. Okay, so the, you know the X and Y axis is the vertical and the horizontal. So what we want to do is we want to grab the fidget spinner width, which we can just right click and duplicate that. Saves us finding it again. So we want to divide the width. So the way we do that is by timesing it by 0.5. So that'll give us half of the screen width. Now we need to take half of the size of the fidget spinner. So we actually need another maths equation in here. We'll just do a minus in here and we can pop this block into there. We'll just duplicate this whole block and we'll put that in there. So we're basically finding the middle of the canvas and then finding and then taking away then taking away half of the fidget spinner image width. It's essentially a quarter, but this is the easiest way to do it. So that's the width sorted out. Now we have to do the same thing for the height. So we can duplicate this whole block here to save us a little bit of time. And these drop down lists here, we can just simply make that change. And voila, we're finished. Okay, so that's the procedure for the loading of the spinner. We actually want to go ahead and initialize now. Okay, so we go to screen one and we'll grab the initialization block. So when screen one starts, then we want to do the following, which is call the load spinner procedure. Okay, so that sets up our initialization screen. So let's go ahead and uh, put in some more details. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly set up the emulator so we can see what it looks like. So I'll click on emulator and it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so that's the emulator set up. If we just click anywhere on there, we'll actually see the fidget spinner. Now there's a couple of things that we forgot to do here. So go ahead and we'll make those changes. It doesn't do anything at the moment. We've got no logic in there. So we'll go ahead and uh, fix that up. Okay, so this hasn't gone the right spot because I actually grabbed the wrong width. So let's just remove that. And we actually wanted to get the canvas width. Okay, so that makes more sense. So we're looking for half of, half of the canvas and half of the widget spinner width. Right, so let's just go back here, see if it's still working. Uh, it doesn't really update too quickly, but we want to change this friction color here because orange on orange isn't too crash hot. So we we'll quickly go back into designer and we'll go into this second one here and we're going to change that to we'll change it to red because friction's kind of like a stop we'll see if this updates uh yeah there it is so now it's in the middle and we see we've got our speed buttons and friction sliders here so it looks all right at the moment let's go ahead and uh, minimize that and we'll continue on with the building of the blocks so now we want to put some functionality into the fidget spinner. So there's a couple of things we need to do. We'll set up some um, variables to start with. So we're going to need a couple of variables here and we're just going to go ahead and just quickly do those. So you'll need rotation and we'll make that value equal to zero. And we'll just duplicate that block and we'll call another one friction. So we're going to change the friction speed, which again is the speed it actually slows down at and we'll just do one more block here and initialize another global and we'll call this one rotation speed so the rotation speed will be the 
when you flick the fidget spinner how quickly you'll be flicking it so and we'll just set that to zero as well I think okay so there are variables that we need let's go ahead and add some more functionality so if we go down to the fidget spinner uh, we can see that there's a there's a block called when fidget spinner is flung now that detects the movements on the actual screen so that's what we want in this particular case we're going to set the rotation speed and we're going to use a maths block for that so that rotation speed is going to be the speed of the fidget spinner so we'll get that speed and we'll just drop that in there and it's going to be multiplied by the slider that manages the speed so we didn't put any labels on that but we know that slider one is the speed slider so let's just grab the value from there and that's the thumb position we need so we'll just drag that into there so that's the speed sorted uh, we can just go in and change those labels so it makes a little bit more sense might just go ahead and do that back in the designer we'll just change this to friction rename friction slide and we'll just change this one to speed slide so rename speed slide okay back into the blocks and you can see now that the actual name has changed so we can actually see which one we're talking about uh, we're going to go ahead and do the rotation now we want to set the rotation to get the heading so this is actually going to help us to determine which direction you're flicking the fidget spinner so we'll grab the heading here now it's okay if you don't understand this um, you're really just doing a, a, a learning process here so and also we wanted to add a clock to do some of the timings so we didn't add that before so let's go back to the designer again we'll go across to the canvas section and we need to find the clock so we can use the clock to perform events based on time that has passed so we want to go down to the clock setup and we're just going to make the timer disabled and the interval set to 10 so that's 10 milliseconds between ticks of the clock so we'll go back to blocks again and now we have a clock function here we're going to go ahead and get the set clock function so we're going to set it set clock timer enable so what we're going to do is when we actually do a fling we want to actually set the clock so it starts running so we're going to grab a logic block true and that's the basic function we need to detect movement on the mobile screen so now we need to do something with that once we detect it so we're going to go ahead and pick up another block here when the position has changed we want to set the global friction value to the value on the actual dial so we're just making the value of the friction variable equal to the thumb position so that just means that when you actually move it it actually resets that okay so now we're going to go ahead and work on the clock so these are the functions you perform while the clock is ticking so we'll do a when clock timer block and we're going to do some if statements in here so just bear with me on that so this is going to be an if then and we're going to do another if then in here and we also want to set this as an else so the way we do that is we just click on the blue icon and hit it else and we have that in here and we'll just duplicate this again okay so this is what it should look like and now we'll just go ahead and populate the values so we're going to get the global rotation and the way we do that is go up to global rotation and we'll just do a get on that now we want to put that into an equation so we're going to check to see if it's equal or less than zero this determines which way that the fidget spinner is spinning so let's grab a math block and we'll grab this variable one here pop that in there and 
We change this to less than or equal to. We want to get a zero value, so we'll just copy and paste that. So if the rotation is less than zero, which means you swipe down, then we want to perform the following functions. We want to use this block again, so we'll just duplicate that. But instead of the rotation, we want the rotation speed. So we'll just pop that in here. So we just want to make sure that this is greater than zero this time. So if, if the rotation speed is greater than zero, i.e. it's actually moving, then we want to do the following. We want to set the rotation speed and we'll get rid of this whole block here. We want to set the rotation speed and it's going to be a maths equation again. So this time it's a minus. So the rotation speed will be the rotation speed. And we'll just get that value. Minus the friction speed. So this is just saying that we want to reduce that number by the amount of friction that's here. So we'll just get that value here and pop it in there. Okay, so when it's spinning, it's obviously gonna get slower based on the number that we have set for the friction variable. Now we wanna go ahead and set the fidget spinner heading. So this is a little bit of a trick. Because the fidget spinner is symmetrical, and can be pivoted on the axis, we're actually just going to change the direction of the picture. So it doesn't actually spin around, it just looks like it is because we just quickly change the fidget spinner direction each time and it gives the appearance of spinning. So let's set the fidget spinner heading in here and we need another maths equation here. So we're going to use a minus block again, so I'll just duplicate that and pop this here and we'll just get rid of these two. Okay, so we want the fidget spinner heading now. So we'll grab the fidget spinner heading. So we want the value of the fidget spinner heading and we're gonna minus the rotation speed. We'll just get this value and pop it in here. Okay, there's something else I wanna do here is also actually stop the clock when we've actually finished. So we're just gonna drop this else block in here and we're going to do a set clock. Click on clock. And we'll just grab that over here. And this time we're going to make it equal to false. So this just means that while it's greater than zero, it's going to continue sub subtracting the friction of value. And eventually it'll get down to zero and then we'll just stop the clock. Now we wanna duplicate this block here. So let's just duplicate the whole thing and we'll pop it down here. Now this time, so if the value is equal to, if the value is less than zero, we're doing this first block, but if it's not, then we're gonna come, come along and do this one. So this time, we wanna make sure that the rotation speed is greater than zero. We're gonna set the rotation speed to equal the rotation speed minus the global friction. So nothing's changed there. But this time we want to actually make, we want to add this value. So we'll just remove this block here. We'll just grab these values out of here and we'll just change that to a positive block. So we're just gonna add these values this time. Because the value we've got is a negative, we wanna add the number and that gives us, and that gets us back to a zero position again. And wow, that is it. So let's go ahead and start the emulator and give it a spin. Okay, so that's the app and we can just spin it around and it can spin this way as well. Now it's a little hard to spin it with the mouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it onto a phone. So the way we do that is we just go up to build and then to app provide QR code for APK. That way App Inventor will actually compile the code for us and it's an easy way to install on your mobile phone. Okay, so we're just waiting for this to compile. And now we have a QR code, so we can actually install that on the phone. So we'll just hit QR and uh, 
there we go, pick up the phone. We just do an open link and click on OK for install it. And we want to just open the file. And we're just going to do an install here. So this is just downloading your application. Now you can upload it to the Google Play Store, but you've got to go through a bit of setup for that. So this is just an easy way to do it. So that's the fidget spinner there. Now once we start spinning it, it spins. And we can spin it this way or that way. It's pretty cool really. And you can just change the friction settings so it slows down a lot quicker. Or you can set it so it actually speeds up a lot quicker too. So how cool is that? It even has that effect, that it looks like it's going the opposite direction, even though it isn't. So spin it that way, or we can spin it that way. So that's the Fidget Spinner app. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And, uh, and if you want to see more of these App Inventor tutorials, just let me know and uh, I'll see what I can do. This one is quite a long one. So you should be able to just follow along and get yourself your own fidget spinner app. Till next time, it's bye for now.